Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by This Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. The Sphere Network. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today at advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. This Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Baptiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Ali What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Technocrats. I am your host, Gary Lee, also known as G Hawkins. Of course, you can find me anywhere online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snappity Chatting at G Hawkins. That's G Hawkins with a Z, and I'm sitting here with my main man, Jay. Jay, how you feeling today? Good, sir. Oh, man, I'm all right, bro. It's a Monday, day after the Super Bowl. I know, right? <laughs> I know. Did, yeah. you, did your team win? I wasn't really rooting for either one of them, I but I'm kind of glad Philly got that first. Yeah, Philly yeah. needed that. Yeah, that city Philly, needs some The brotherly <laughs> love. Get a little love in Philly, okay? Yeah, they need to win a something. Super Bowl. So <laughs> right. I'm excited for them as well. I'm I'm happy. First championship in yeah. the city. Yeah. So they needed that, and I'm, I'm glad we didn't have a repeat situation as we have the last couple of years where – uh, the Pats are down, and then they miraculously come, <laughs> come back. back. So know, just, it, it was just good not to not to have that situation happen. So I was happy. Yeah, same here. I'm yeah. Results. But how's everything else going? You good? Oh yeah, everything is okay, my brother. Just uh, staying busy with business, keeping up with this emerging technology that's going on, mm -hmm. and we're seeing different things that's changing and coming to Houston, okay. which we're probably talking about another uh, episode. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know. So it's so many things we want to bring, especially as I guess we get closer. To our hundredth episode. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good things we want to have conversations about. So remember, folks, for those that are tuned in right now, we want to say what's up to our Facebook Live viewers. Remember, we're only on Facebook Live for roughly about 15, 20 minutes or so. So make sure you subscribe because we're talking about the ins and outs of technology that are designed to power the digital you. So Let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into some conversations for this good old Monday. First and foremost, we've got a new little self-driving vehicle that's <laughs> about to hit the roads pretty soon. So over at Tech Radar, they're talking about a new self-driving car that's designed not to carry around people, but it's designed to ferry <laughs> around food and other Goods. Now, this device is called the Neuro, the R1, uh, and it's fully autonomous electronic vehicle. And here's the key, folks. We're talking about a vehicle with no driver. Now, obviously, uh, this is something that we're headed to. We talk a lot about uh, from a trends perspective, and uh, it's, it's, it's imperative to understand that all the rules and regulations that are continuing to move forward, they're being addressed by companies like this. They're being massaged and pushed forward by companies like this. And this is an ex-Google founder who put this together, yes, Jay. Yes. Um, I'm excited to see things like this on the road. But of course, when you're talking about these type of vehicles, we always like to talk about the people that it impacts the most. And that's mm -hmm. going to be your Uber Eats delivery yes, people. That's yes. going to be your Pizza Hut delivery people. Yes. What's your feel for this Neuro? And, and obviously, hot off of CES. Yes. We talked about CES, and, and that was one of the big takeaways there was these d vehicles that are going to be delivering goods to consumers. How do you feel about this tech space and where we're at right now, seeing these other companies start to pop up? 
Well, we've seen everything, like you say, take place a lot faster than what we expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the CES, we see that these were they were inundated with a lot of autonomous vehicles. And we talk about this weekly. But the biggest thing I like about this uh, R1 from Neuro is that they've started to go a different direction than what Waymo and Uber is doing. You know, everyone is, is wanting to bring people and to get them to a certain delivery point. Sure. But like we talk about ferrying these goods back and forth. Mm-hmm. I think about Amazon Go, and I think about Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods. Uh, this definitely changes the delivery point of getting groceries to individuals, getting goods to individuals. And I like how the thing la- navigates with the GPS to get right at your curb. Yeah. Or it can know if it's a multifamily dwelling, like an apartment complex. Uh, they're doing it with the mapping system to get it to where it needs to be. When you walk to the system, you bring your cell phone, mobile phone on your smartwatch, and then it opens the thing up that has your goods and supplies in it. And I don't know if you know that the size of it is yeah. about yeah, it's, about it's, half the size <laughs> of it. Yeah, 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 right. Like this, is, this, to me, is going to be a good look for those who want goods and things that are, are dropped off, but more so – to be able to have multiple stops versus having the back and forth right. the hub and spoke build out. Right. Like it's more of a, you know, I can work from one or two, three, four clients, being able to carry roughly about what, 20 bags of groceries? Yeah, right. So I think that's great. Right. And I think about it like this think about product release. Uh, releases for like companies with technology. I don't know if they would do it, but I think about the Apple Store or, or another store, GameStop, and mm-hmm. they know in, a, in an area within a zip code that so many people reserve this particular game or this particular product. Sure. This thing can come to do a delivery point, and you just go grab it and assess it, don't have to leave. And it can kind of circumvent going to the regular delivery systems from the mm-hmm. mail and things such as that. But uh, the biggest thing I see this thing being used for is that people are arguing saying that. I don't know. Tell me what you think about this, Gary. Do you All think right. this is hogwash? Oh, okay. <laughs> hogwash. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, people are saying that the reason why they think it's better to go to autonomous vehicles mm-hmm. is because they, they think it's going to be actually more safer, safer uh, for the autonomous vehicles to do the deliveries as opposed to the human element where somebody may want to speed and to try to make up time they lost or not be paying attention and texting. they saying with the autonomous vehicle, it's going to be a lot safer and Therefore, also be more cost effective. What, what do you think about that? So, so here's the thing. I don't for for those who have had an opportunity to ride in an autonomous vehicle, right? A vehicle that was well, semi-autonomous, not fully, obviously, but a, a vehicle that will will you know steer as needed, slow down, speed up. It takes about 20 minutes for you to get comfortable in that type of environment, and then you realize the reliability how it will predict what's going on based on the speed you're driving, based on this, or it's driving, based on the speed of a vehicle in front of it, behind it, and it, it's going to make some adjustments. And once once you've, you've really bought into that technology, once you've really bought into that idea, it's hard to go backwards. Okay. So to answer your question, I think that because we've had such great buy-in thus far for people who have auto steer capabilities and and uh, uh, adaptive cruise control, so yes. to speak, so it adapts to the road and environment, this will become the go-to standard because mm. it will be safer. It mm. will put uh, pedestrians in a situation where they can rely on com- you know artificial intelligence not to run <laughs> them over. Okay. And the the biggest part is companies. Being able to have a more predictive time frame on when good, goods and services will be delivered based on constant feedback from this vehicle. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Knowing exactly what's going on, being able to pre- predict traffic patterns, as well as, cre- cu- how do I say this? As well as curtail and to some degree curate traffic patterns. Mm. Because now if you if you launch a thousand of these at a particular time frame, you can predict what traffic's gonna look like. So you can stagger deliveries as needed to adjust the flow of traffic. And the more autonomous vehicles are on the road, the more as a whole people can do that. Mm-hmm. You can control the flow of traffic. So I think there are a lot of safety measures that will will or a lot of safety opportunities that will arrive because of this i think there are a lot of costs that will be more heavy on the front side for mm-hmm. purchasing these vehicles but over time especially being that most of them are going to be electric ele- electric over time those costs will diminish mm-hmm. and then the the problem i see is people losing their jobs yeah yes yes let me ask you this so 
as the sphere continued to grow, yep. Would yes, you? We're gonna get one. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get one. <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna deliver it, but we're gonna get one. Okay. That's no, no, we're gonna ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, I was gonna say, would you want to utilize one of these fully autonomous vehicles? Because mm-hmm. it's gonna be here. I say in the next two years. Yeah. Some legislation. The law, the law gonna be passed 2020. 2020 that it's gonna yeah. be fully autonomous yeah. stuff. Say you want to dispatch one of your vehicles from the sphere to go pick up a guest. Yeah. That'd, would be, you, that'd be something you would do. Okay. That'd be fire. Okay. Okay. Fire. If I can, if I can ensure that the guests can get here safely, be on time, and have a way to get back, um, yeah, I would love to be able to add that as a deliverable option okay. for okay. guests. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, dope. as you see, Gary always adopts and in. try to technology. The buy-in is <laughs> yeah. real. Right. Yeah. There's, there's no question <laughs> about that. The buy-in is real, Jay. Yes. So, Neuro, good deal with yeah. them. I think they're going to be very successful. We shall see. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. We shall see. Um, and, of course, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, we continue to, to push this technology to you all and everybody on the other side of this camera, everybody on the other side of this microphone. If you've got questions about things that we're discussing right now, feel free to reach out to us. Hit us up at the Sphere TV. Use our hashtag uh uh, the technocrats um, once again that's technocrats all one word with a hashtag or shoot us an email technocrats at the sphere.tv because we want to be able to answer those questions that are popping up in your mind surrounding these autonomous vehicles and different things that are coming down the pipeline um, so but before we go any further this particular portion of the show is sponsored by the Houston Housewives of Finance so Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 millions of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say that they don't have enough in savings. Don't become one of these statistics, folks. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or send them an email over to info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask us how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. So, keeping this party on the road, let's talk a little bit about our good old friends across the pond Mm -hmm. over at Nintendo. So... Now, Jay, you know, we've had some conversations about the Nintendo Switch. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. We, I remember when we first did a little, like a layout kind of sort of, you know, talked about some of the uh, video here. And let me let me hit the pause on that because the audio from the video is playing. But we talked about, um, we did a little video overview of what that Nintendo Switch was going to look like. The, the versatility, I think, was one of the biggest things, which we weren't sure if it was going to be gimmicky or not. Uh, but... It seems like the Nintendo Switch is here to stay. You know, yes. we're talking 14 million plus handsets sold, and I think that a lot of that the biggest thing about this device is most people are using it for mobile gaming more than anything. Right. Um, what I'm concerned with, and what I want to talk a little bit about, is the cost of ownership for the Nintendo Switch, Mm -hmm. which comes to the cost of the games themselves. Okay. Now. Roughly anywhere from $45 to $55 per game is what we're looking at. Um, and when you're, t- when you're pairing that cost, now you're talking about the gaming aspect of this Nintendo Switch, which is portable by nature, dockable by, you know, from a modular perspective. These, the cost of games, though, are right in line with what you can expect from a PlayStation 4, what you can expect from you take it right the Xbox it's not One. Not. Right. So... How do you feel about having a po- – so, I mean, your phone, right? <laughs> yes. Portable device, games are 5 bucks, 10 bucks. Yes, yes. But you're telling me this Nintendo Switch, I got to pay 45 50 bucks, 55 bucks for this game, when to me I'm thinking big console, 4K, surround sound. Yes, like that's yes. my mindset, right. not mobile gaming at that price point. Right. How do you feel about that? I, I concur. 
I mean, I think about the Nintendo Switch. You know, I don't. I'm not favorable toward it. I think it's nice. They still trying to stay in the game. They mm-hmm. keep the classics going. But the Nintendo Switch is a lackluster still to me. And then, like you talked about, it's a lot of money up front. They have no storage built in. Uh, the little controllers and the nunchucks they give you are too small. And it has a lot of glitches in it still. Mm. And then, too, there's a lot of glitches in it. And also, too, they want you to pay that much money for a game that's not next gen, that's still running 1080p. So a true hardcore gaming enthusiast uh, is not going to really you know, benefit from this, this console or the mobile gaming. And it's limited. The few games they do have, it's always five or six games mm-hmm. on that console that are must have. Other than that, there's nothing else worth buying it for. Yeah, and, and we're going to show you a gaming yeah. price comparison. We've got an article uh, from CNET, and they've got some titles that are, that are midway through the article uh, that are listed for the PS4 as well as for the Xbox One. And the switch. So I want to make sure we get that up for our for our uh, video podcast viewers, um, so we can actually look at some of these titles and compare a few of them. So fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. you know some of the the popular things like Elder Scrolls uh, V Five for those that are watching right now. Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim is you know forty bucks on both PS4 and Xbox One, and we're talking physical copies, folks. Mm-hmm. Digital copies are gonna save you ten dollars, obviously. Uh, but for, but from a Switch, it's it's twenty dollars more. You know, thirty dollars more. You know, same price, digital and physical. That makes so no sense. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Like somebody explained this to me. Doom, which is an older <laughs> older title, how are you still selling it for sixty dollars? You know what I'm saying? And you know, Dragon Ball uh, Xenoverse Two. How you, how are you selling this for fifty dollars when it's thirty dollars on both? And once again, you've got four K upscaling on the Xbox One X and right? DLC Come on, and support d- exactly. Yeah. So you you put us in a position to have to pay for something like a Minecraft, which is twenty dollars. It's old school Minecraft, mm-hmm. but it's still fifty percent higher on a Nintendo Switch. I'm not understanding um, if Nintendo realizes that they're cutting into their own uh, opportunity there mm-hmm. by software gouging you're, you're right. price gouging on the software side right i think the game should be no more than 29 bucks for the length the content sure the graphics Come on. uh no dlc support and i mean it should be no more than 30 bucks a game for the nintendo switch just being real yeah i, yeah. I, I agree with that yeah. I, and once again most people are most peak at most people are using this as a portable device right and nintendo's known you know the game boy was Probably one of the most successful portable oh, devices yes. ever, let alone the Game Boy Two and the yeah, Nintendo Vance, DS yes. came out and you know and, and continued that that process. Um, but Nintendo's got to do something, and they right. better do something fast because I, if I had both, con- I wouldn't. I'm not gonna buy the Nintendo Same Switch here, right. because I don't want to pay twice for the games, right. let alone <laughs> have to pay more right. for something to be portable with with lesser graphics. Right. That's not that's not a win. Right. The memory card, the extra controller you need to get Come because on. that one controller they give you and those little nunchuck things are, are garbage. You're going to have to have another controller. So you're spending more than a PS4 Pro or getting an Xbox One X by the time you just get the basic accessories with this thing. Yeah. And then the games are still the same price. So, yeah. But yet Nintendo is still selling so well. Yeah. Um, well people want the yeah, head. People, yeah. You know, they... they Kids, right? yeah. <laughs> people want a game, want a want a successful mobile gaming platform, and obviously you can do those things on your phone. But if I can have a device that's that this is what it is, there's a nostalgic value for those for the older heads mm-hmm. that are that are into it, and obviously for the millennials to hand them a device that has this functionality of being able to move from, you know, from playing in your living room to playing on the bus on the way right. to school because mom won't let you necessarily have a cell phone right so now you there's a lot of other things at play that open the door for for continued purchase so right. we shall see now facebook livers once again we told you we only like to give you the first 15 20 minutes of the show that means you've got to go to the website and subscribe go over to the sphere.tv forward slash technocrats and we've got options for you you can find us on itunes soundcloud google play music stitcher spreaker iHeartRadio, youtube you name it we've got it for you now while you're there make sure you review us give us some constructive criticism so we can continue to build great shows for you and of course share this out share with your family your friends your colleagues share with your loved ones share with your haters share with anybody <laughs> and everybody so they can get this great digital content 
And if you truly love what, do, what we're doing here and you want to sow back into us, go to sphere.tv forward slash donate. We've got a couple of options. Yes. You can uh, reach us with a single donation right on the website as well as a Patreon-based donation for those who are looking to get some exclusive content for Patreon subscribers. So once again, we're going to cut Facebook Live here. But remember, you can reach out to us and get the rest of the show right here at the Sphere. So... Let's keep this party rolling, Jay. Yes. Next up to bat is our good old fin- friends at Huawei. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Huawei. Okay. More, more love than hate. Oh, okay, okay. So before I hop into this, I'm going to give a little backstory. Uh, Huawei made the Nexus 6P, which was arguably... The second best Nexus ever built, mm, right? Okay. The first going to the original Nexus 5. Okay. And this is obviously before we get into the Google Pixels and the Pixel 2 and all that stuff. But when it came to pure Android platform, had you know, super fast fingerprint reader, large screen. You know, they, they decided to stick with 1080p so you can get better battery life, but 3,400 milliamp battery. I could not have a better device than my Huawei Nexus 6P. And they rebranded it, obviously, and put the Nexus mm-hmm. word on it. Uh, but now, it looked like Huawei's latest device, their Mate 10 Pro, is going to be available for pre-order, and not necessarily in China, <laughs> but here in the U.S. Jay, tell us a little bit about what's going on here with Huawei and this uh, 10 Pro pre-order. Well, Huawei is definitely bringing something, like you mentioned, to the U.S., and uh, one of the people that was supposed to be pr- the provider, U.S. provider, was AT&T. And this, this phone is actually being manufactured and it's coming from China, uh, believe it or not. And as you touched on, they had a great affiliation with building the Nexus 6P, mm-hmm. which was a great phone. Yeah, a great phone. That you, and, and so Huawei is coming out with their phone, but I'm thinking they're coming out a little too late. But I think the phone is nice. Uh, you want to break down the specs of the phone yeah, later? Let, let's talk yeah. about it. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, first and foremost, it's arriving on February 18th with 256 gigs of storage. We're talking a 6-inch uh, 1080p AMOLED display. So, you're going to get your nice contrasting colors, dark, dark, deep blacks, your, your vivid colors from that. Um, octa-core processor using 6 gigs of RAM with dual cameras, which is now a standard. Uh, 20 meg- megapixel on the back. 12 megapixel on the front, um, as, or excuse me, dual rear cameras, 20 megapixel and 12 megapixel on the back, which are 8 megapixel on the front side. Um, and they've got a, a dedicated AI processing unit for your images to give you better translations and recognition uh, through you know software control along with the, with the hardware. So uh, the question is, like you just said, is this too late? Now, there's nothing, I repeat, nothing that they can do to move me away from my OnePlus 5T. <laughs> I, I knew right? it was coming. Let me just, I knew let it was me coming. be honest, though. I let me be honest coming. for those that are listening yeah. right now, for those that are watching this. You can't move me away from this device. Mm-hmm. And at the fact that this is an $800 handset, right? right? right. $800. Right. I got that same bang for a lesser buck for mm-hmm. my OnePlus 5T. Coming in at four ninety nine, I think I spent five forty nine for the upgraded right. uh, uh, storage. But of course, they are giving you one hundred fifty dollars back, depending on what store you go pick that up at, whether it's Amazon, B and H, or Best Buy or Newegg. But still, I think they're a little too late. This is a twenty seventeen release, not twenty eighteen. Right. right, six gigs of RAM, and also too, they were slated to be released um, with the U.S. carrier as a flagship phone for them. Mm-hmm. And AT T dropped them, and T Mobile didn't want them, Verizon didn't want them, so. That tells me there that they believe it's too much already out superseding them, yep. and they're coming out late. And also, it's some security issues involved. Well, it's China. China. <laughs> yeah. you it's know. China. Yeah. It's, so it's, yeah. China does some surveillance stuff. So it's, it's, it's such a shame, Jay. It's such a shame that we've got to be so conscious of things like that now. Yeah, you know, right. w- within the tech space and things that are coming out, we really have to keep our eye on these companies. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I would want this device in my house. Uh, but it's not like my Alexa ain't listening. It's not right. like my, 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 my 5T ain't listening because right. everybody's listening nowadays. But, but yeah, I think it's a little too late. Right. And you know what, too? I think just to touch on, I think the whole industry of the mobile phones, smartphones, mm-hmm. is just um, 
is on decline anyway. Mm. I mean, uh, we could talk about another episode, but just hearing some of the uh, flat coming back from Apple, uh, some of the things Samsung are doing. I think Apple the, catching L's. Yeah. I'm Whew. thinking, like we talked about, the death of the smartphone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we I, said we did. Remember that? We did. Yeah, we had that? the conversation because you, yeah. you know it's coming. Yeah. The the question is how soon and how willing are people to move away from that from that smartphone platform? Right. And how stable are we going to get hardware that's going to supersede? Which is what we talked about. And for those that are watching us right now, what, what we've introduced to you all way back when with Google Glasses mm-hmm. and then a couple of other developers that have built things, and which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, but I mean, you know, I would say at least the next two, three, four years, we're still going to get some hard pushes. But I think you're starting to get to the end of the rope as far as design cues. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, outside of the full pane of glass, you're getting rid of the bezels. The foldables. Yeah. yeah. But you gotta have you still gotta have great processing power. You still gotta have great hardware at the end of the day. I'm just I'm I'm wondering what companies like this are thinking when they're releasing something this year when we've saw already companies are putting fingerprint readers below the the LCD or OMLED. Well, I think it was an LCD or LED panel because mm-hmm. um, you couldn't do it with the OMLED. But uh, they're putting fingerprint readers right into the glass. Right. Now. So right. there are other things that are coming out that this hadn't even touched on. So Right. It's, it's, it's too late to the party. But before I give my take what I think is about to happen to the smartphone, sure. this portion of the show is sponsored by the Sphere. Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at the Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789. Or send an email over to advertise at the spirit.tv. There it is, good folks. Make sure y'all reach out to us. Let us know if you're looking to advertise. We've got some slots available for you and, uh, and some discounts for those who decide to do quarterly advertising as well. There you go. Come on board. Come on board. Let's do yeah. it. So, so can, I, can, I, can I address that? Yeah, well, oh, okay. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah so sure. So, before we went to commercial break, I wanted to tell you what I foresee what's about to happen. Talk about it. We talked about the death of smartphones a couple of episodes that you mentioned and brought about. Mm-hmm. I feel like right now they pretty much reached everything they can do with a smartphone. It's not really anything I can foresee myself as a draw mm-hmm. to make me want to upgrade again or get another phone. Outside of my phone region is end of life and I'm getting performance issues. Is there anything you can think of that make you want to just say, hey, I just got to buy this phone? It's like the, the excitement factor, the marketing factor of ownership. You know, we love tech. It's, it's at the point to me like they hit that plateau in a sense to where it's nothing else to push me now. So I concur. And the reason why is because I can remember, and I'm sure you can, I'm sure for those that are listening to us, you, you're sitting in traffic right now listening to this podcast. I'm sure you can remember back in 2007 when Steve Jobs released the first Apple iPhone. It was like this big. Like it was real, yeah, it was real right, small right. In, in respects to, to the phones today, right? Right. Um, and we were wooed and wild. Mm-hmm. Ten years later, we get the iPhone X, which we weren't even wooed and wild about. Right, exactly. It was like, okay, you moved the home button right. to be photo <laughs> or face unlock, which yeah. was trivial. Something Samsung did four years before, right. and they let go of it. Now everybody want to bring it back because right. Apple said you should bring it back. Yes. But really because they didn't have another place to put their fingerprint right. reader, and they didn't want to put it into the power button, which is what we suggested yes, they on right. the show. Right. Or put it into the Apple, Apple logo, logo on the back, better. Yeah. which would have been even better. So... We digress, but back to the question you asked, there's nothing that can be done now with this slab of metal. You can make it thinner. You can make the screen go from start. We've seen it. We've mm-hmm. seen the screen go from start. We've seen almost bezel-less already. Mm-hmm. We talked about the Sharp device. Mm-hmm. This was about a year ago. Right. We looked at the uh, the Essential phone, which had the camera right in the middle. We, we've seen all these devices, but... There's nothing in this device 
that's going to give us that wow factor anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, it's what can you connect to this device that's going to add usability. Mm -hmm. That goes back to the invention of the smartwatch, right? Mm -hmm. Which Apple currently leads on. Not that it's a huge and popular seller, right. but Apple still leads in respect to other smartwatch mm -hmm. owners. Which we're about to talk about in a minute. There you go. Which is <laughs> smart glasses, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, so migrating over to glasses that can deliver mm -hmm. something similar to your Google uh, uh, watch experience your iOS or what is what is the i the Android and iOS? No, the I, what's iOS software called on your out in the Apple Watch? Oh, is it Watch OS? Watch OS. So yeah, we, three, we've yeah. got Watch OS and you've got Android Wear. Um, so you've got these two, uh, you know, drill down pieces of software, very rudimentary in comparison to your software on your phone. But the question is, how do you put that into the glasses and get that rolling? Nothing new is coming under the sun from the watch, from the phone. Right. So so why not the glasses? Right. So let's talk about it a little bit. So Intel now wants smart glasses to be a thing, right? So Intel <laughs> has decided to build their new glasses called the Vaunt, and that's V-A-U-N-T for those that listen to us right now, the Intel Vaunt. Um, and we're, we're talking sub 50 grams of, from a weight perspective, uh, and it'll work with prescription or non-prescription. And here's, here's one of the things that you probably wouldn't have expected. They have no camera. Not only do they have no camera, they've got no necessary input pieces, um, no microphone as of yet. Mm -hmm. Very interesting concept from Intel to dive into on the glasses side. Now, I think the look of these is mm -hmm. a lot better than most glasses we've yes, seen. Yes. And I think the hardware under the hood is something that's going to become a de facto standard. These particular glasses, they don't have some little small, tiny LCD on the side like Google Glasses did or something that's projecting onto the glass itself. But what you're seeing is retina projection through these glasses Jay, what's your thoughts on this, and how do you feel about having something projected right on your retina? Okay. I was kind of worried about the little laser or that light uh, mm -hmm. being able to, t uh, to touch your retina or your eyeball, but they kind of explained to that it's such so low, I think, class one um, laser, but also it's really to give you notifications. But this is what I think what Intel is doing. Intel is the chip giant of the world. Sure. Okay. Intel are probably saying, look, this space or this vertical is not growing enough. What can we do to help this vertical mm. to be able to get more people to come on and make it more competitive? Because more likely, everybody's going to want to get chipsets from us. So if we, if we grow this vertical, this department, we're going to make a lot of money. Let's go ahead and show some of the people that, hey, with our chipset, this is a template to how to bring a really easy, smart glass, smart wearable to the market, mm -hmm. leveraging our chipset. We'll let you put in the R and D to add in all the nice features to differentiate yourself from everybody else. This is what I think Intel was doing. So now, what they demonstrating is that hey, we can get it out this quickly. Yeah, it, it worked with prescription and non-prescription. I'm thinking you're gonna have other people want to come in now and start working with this chipset for Intel. Because mm. remember, it was Google at first, and I think Intel just in created this vertical to where more so where more people are gonna come into the game. I'm saying within the next year, you're going to see these at our masters and lens crafters everywhere. So you really, so f what I'm understanding from you is that this is just a proof of concept. Yes. That, they're not yeah. really concerned about selling Vons. No, they're not. They just want you to know that our <laughs> chips will work <laughs> right. and this will function. Right. I yeah. like that. I, yeah. I, and, I, and you might be on to something, Jay. Yeah. Because I think what, what we're looking for right now when it comes to wearables we're looking for that de facto standard. We still don't have a standard, whether that's in, even on your, your, your watch, we still have a standard of what do you want to use as to interface on that OS. We don't have a, we surely don't have a standard when it comes to glasses because we got different manufacturers right. building different types. Mm -hmm. People are, are either focused on augmented or they're focused on virtual or mixed. Right. And I think that this form factor along with what they're delivering as far as a, a you know small little retinal laser class one folks mm -hmm. uh, on mm -hmm. your eyeball this might be it this might be a win right for intel especially going into late 2018 2019 right i think about all these companies factories uh development people in china everywhere else mm -hmm. want to get this chip and start producing their own smart eye wearables but before i give a comment about the, the death of the smartphone mm -hmm. let's tend to this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. 
At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashanja Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. There it is. And remember, folks, if you say the sphere, you get 10% off That's a good deal. of that service. That's yeah. a really yeah, good, good deal. deal. Yeah, you know, know, dental dental care, can, yeah, dental work can, yeah, can that's shoot up big there. money. Can definitely no shoot up. whammies. <laughs> so, Jay, you were about to say something about this oh, transition? Yeah, so I feel like these people are the trendsetters, right? They know mm-hmm. where the industry is going. They know the supply chain logistics. They know what all the people are talking about, and they want to grow this vertical. I feel like what we talked about before when you made a good point of episodes ago about the the death of the smartphone. Mm-hmm. We talked about pretty much they did everything they can, gimmicky in it or not, to bring us into one and get the new phone. It's fading now. People are starting to become more content and starting to keep their handsets longer than they normally do. Yep. So with that being said, it's going to have to be that this gives some kind of functionality, which you mentioned, on the smartwatch and the wearables. The, f- the, the new uh, big deal about the smartphones, I feel – they're going to have to give you certain features that interoperate with these glasses. And I think what they're going to do is shift us from looking at, oh, look at how thin my phone is, or looking at what this phone can do, but uh, what this phone can do for us opening apps, but look at how my phone works with your smartwatch. But not particularly smartwatch, I'm thinking the glasses are going to supersede the smartwatch. Oh, yeah. I think the glasses, if they come out with transitions, the shades and the glasses, mm-hmm. prescription and non-prescription, I think the watch – it's going to really drop down a tier. So the cell phone will be second. And sure. I think these glasses are going to be the number one. I think the glasses are going to become the number one marketing thing. Not only that, but the number one consumption thing by consumers. I foresee the smartphone dropping to second, the the eyewear being number one, and the watch going down to three uh, somewhere else. I agree. Definitely from a marketing perspective. And obviously, we still got smart speakers, which we talked yeah. about last week with right. Apple's release of the HomePod. Four. Um, yeah. we, you know, Google's Google Max and, and their additional uh, audio you know, promises that they're trying to do in the home and Cortana. So you've, we've got all these devices that are, are, are there to be, you know, to work within, the, you know, this sphere, no pun intended, of, uh, of smartphones, of interaction, of AI. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you're right that these glasses will become that marketing monolith that will become that giant that everyone flocks to until something else comes down the road. Right. Well, who knows what that'll be? Right, right. I think this is going to be the number one wearable device that people want. Mm-hmm. And like you said before, the phone would just be the conduit, the wireless conduit, the process everything to send to the glasses. And we're going to shift from uh, rushing in lines and standing overnight to get a phone to stand all night to get the latest pair of glasses. Yeah, ain't that something? Yeah. I mean, some of us don't even wear glasses. Yeah, right. I hear <laughs> rushing to get them. Yeah. But, you know, that's technology for you. Yeah. It continues to push us in areas that, that's not necessarily our norm. So yes. we shall see. Um, but that's about it, good folks. We want to know what you all think. Shoot us an email over to technocrats at thesphere.tv. And, of course, reach us on social media at the Sphere TV. You want to use the hashtag technocrats so that we can, you know, follow your conversation and answer your questions. Jay, it's always a pleasure having you on the show, good oh, I'm sir. Yeah. I'm just here to, to <laughs> accentuate what you bring to the table, brother. That's oh. all I'm doing. Man. I, I'm just throwing you the out. Oh. let you slam at home. Oh. Jay, where can the good people reach you at? Hey, y'all continue to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram and Astro Tesla 80 Oh, good deal. And, of course, you can reach me anywhere online. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, at G Hawkins. That's G Hawkins with a Z. This has been another great episode of Technocrats. We will see you all next time. Peace.